In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the charging port on the iPhone XS Max. This one does charge intermittently. However, it wasn't charging from empty on the lightning connector. I've just charged it wirelessly to make sure that the phone boots. Let's begin by turning off the device. And by the way, I have already checked that it's not just been obstructed by something because I know you guys can sometimes be critical of that. Begin by removing the two pentalobe screws either side of the lightning connector at the bottom of the phone. Now take a single sided razor blade and create an incision in between the edge of the screen and the metal chassis of the phone and then just pry it backwards to create a larger gap. And in that larger gap you just created we can insert one of these plastic guitar picks just like that. And then you're just going to hold it in a couple of millimetres and run it along the edge just like that. The adhesive on these phones is not as strong as newer models, so you will find that you can do this without heat. Although if you come into any resistance when you're pulling through and removing it, it's a good idea to have a little bottle of isopropyl alcohol ready, and then you can just add a couple of drops along the edge like that, and it'll just make it a little bit easier by softening that adhesive holding down the screen. This model of phone opens from left to right, so lift up the screen from the bottom, Give it a little wiggle from side to side and then pry upwards or lift upwards to open up the phone like opening up the back cover of a book. It's a good idea to put a weighted object like a mug behind the screen to stop it falling over whilst you're working inside the device. This is a pretty common issue what I find when uh, opening up iPhone XS Max, XS and 11s or even the XI's that that camera will pop out so just get that early and you won't have to worry about it when reinstalling the screen later. It just clips in underneath a little latch there. Sorry. Now that we're inside the device, take a tri-wing screwdriver and remove the three screws that hold down this small shield at the bottom of the logic board. It's a really handy idea to have one of these magnetic mats and lay them out in the order that they were removed just on there. There is gonna be a lot of screws to remove during this repair. So I would highly recommend something like that to keep everything organized. Continue removing the tri-wing screws holding down the shield. These are all different sizes. So just make sure that these are laid out properly on your mat. And I can see that there is one missing just here. There will probably be one. You will find that there will be a screw here when removing. Now that all the screws are removed, take some tweezers and lift up this shield here as well as this one. This one's sometimes stuck down, so it might need a little persuasion to remove it, and lay them on the mat beside the screws you've just removed. Next, we need to disconnect the battery, which is this flex cable just here, followed by the display connector and the touch connector. And then finally, there's one more connector just here for the ear speaker and front sensor flex. You will find that this is stuck down to another flex cable here, so just be careful when you're opening this up and peel it up to free it. We can now remove the screen and pop that to one side for reinstallation later. You can see there's lots of adhesive uh, still stuck to the edge of the phone. Just go ahead where you can and peel that off because we will replace this adhesive seal later on. Now we're going to concentrate on removing the charging port. For this model, we have to remove the logic board. So let's start off by, first of all, popping out the SIM tray. Then we can disconnect all the flex cables that are attached to the logic board using a plastic spudger for best practice. That's the charging port connector there. There is another connector just under here, but that's held down with a screw, so we'll remove that in a minute. To free up the logic board, we need to remove this crosshead screw just here, this one just here, another one just up here. Sometimes you'll find this little shield comes with it, sometimes it'll stick to it. Got one standoff screw just here. The shield that's held down by that standoff screw is a bit funny to remove. Obviously, I've done it very easily there, but sometimes it can be a bit awkward because it's got a little latch on it. This cable here needs to be pulled out of the way so that we can free up the logic board. And with that removed, we're going to lift it up from this bottom corner 
And it feels like this has been glued down or something previously, because it is a little bit awkward to remove. And that's out. Oh, maybe it's had some liquid damage where it's stuck to the wireless charging coil or something. Put the board to one side. We don't want to damage that. And then we're going to move down to the bottom of the phone now. And I'm going to start from left to right, removing all the screws. Starting off with these two crosshead screws for the Taptic engine on the left. One more crosshead in the very bottom left corner here. Two tri-wing screws here and here. Another one here, two either side of the lightning connector, and one more tri-wing screw just on the very far right side attached to the loudspeaker, and another crosshead just here. Once they're removed, it allows us to remove this metal bracket. So we'll take that out and store that safely, as well as this bracket here for the Taptic engine which we can disconnect the flex cable for just there. We'll start from left to right again, and we've got some standoff screws this time. One being here, another holding down this plastic shield here, the loudspeaker, two of this side of the lightning connector, which one of we can't get to until we remove the loudspeaker, and then finally one just here. A good thing to remember when you're reassembling this one is that the Tri-wing screws that we removed will always go into the standoff screws and the crossheads will go into the chassis of the phone. There's a little bit of tape holding the loudspeaker in place just here. Remove that by running your tweezers along the bottom of it and then we can lift up this loudspeaker and pop that to one side. There's another flex cable just here which will allow us to remove the Taptic engine now. Now that the speaker's out of the way, we can remove this other standoff screw. And then if you tip the phone up now, you can see that there's two more crosshead screws either side of the lightning connector that need to be removed. Remove this piece of plastic from here. And then using your tweezers, very carefully remove the barometer sensor here, as well as the microphone here. And then it's probably a good idea to add some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the charging port and let that soak in for a moment all the way along it. I'm just going to peel that up from where it sits on the motherboard. But there is another crosshead screw that holds down this antenna wire. And then we can pull that out of the way like that. I'll use tweezers to lift up the flex cable. You don't need a heat to do this, but just take your time and lift it out from where it belongs. Pull that up and then you can see that the charging port is underneath the battery area here. Now a lot of guys what I see will recommend removing the battery but I don't believe that you need to. Instead, if you lift up either side of the charging port flex, you can just peel it out from underneath and you'll find that it does come out quite easily once you've added a few drops of isopropyl alcohol underneath. So we've successfully removed this charging port now. I'm gonna go through the steps to reinstall the new one. Just as an important side note, you will need to use a genuine pulled part for this let me get it out of this bag. It's stuck in there. And I'll, I'll show you why it's important to use pulled parts. The pulled part has the barometer and microphone on it. And if you replace this with a faulty or non-genuine part, there's a chance that the barometer sensor or microphone will cause the device to go into a three minute boot loop. So if you find that you install the new part and it turns off every few minutes, chances are it's because the part isn't suitable um, it's either faulty or probably non-genuine so just make sure that you pick up a genuine pull part the plastic's still attached to this one from when it's been pulled so I'm just going to remove the mic from there because we left the plastic in let's go ahead now with reinstallation and I'll give you some tips along the way whilst we're doing it 
if you add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol onto the sticky bit there it's going to be a lot easier to install it and what I'm going to do I'm going to sort of slide it from side to side so that it'll sit under there and secure into place now the only screws that I'm going to attach to the bottom here are the two very bottom screws so that we know that the charging port itself is lined up fine so I'll go ahead and install those two now Alignment is very important when installing these charge ports because it is very easy to get these installed only to find that something doesn't sit right. So there's two very important parts that you need to align. The first bit being the charging port itself here and then up here the flex cable. So next, I know that I removed the logic board first and then took out the charging port. Next, we're gonna reinstall the logic board so that we know that it's going to fit and sit onto our connector just here. It can be a little bit fiddly to install this logic board, but the easiest way that I've found to do it is to sort of start from the bottom and slide it up underneath those flex cables and FPC connectors, pulling any out of the way that get in the way, and eventually you'll get it up there, threading it through those cables, and it should line up and sit quite nicely just here. And then like I said, it's important to make sure that this flex cable sits nicely. So wiggle it around until you can line it up and push it in. And now we'll leave that secured whilst we secure down the rest of the screws. So if you remember, we had one crosshead screw just here. Slightly longer screw in this one here. And then 10 points if you remember this one. There was the shield first, sorry, the grounding sort of thing. And then another crosshead screw that holds that in place. Let me know how you scored on that one. Now we've got those two small antenna connectors here for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Use your plastic spudger to get those in. Make sure they sit down right and into place. I'm not sure if it blurred it there, but I'm just using the sharp end of the spudger to make sure that they sit down correctly. And then I'll use the tweezers to help me line up that shield and drop that into place before finally installing that standoff screw that holds it down. I'll now go from top to bottom, reinstalling all these FPCs for the camera, flash and lock button first. Then we've got this face ID one, front camera, and infrared camera. Forgive me if I got them wrong in the wrong order, but you know where I'm going. Then we've got the wireless charging coil. We don't want to plug the battery in just yet. We'll do that the very last thing that we do. Finally, we've got this uh, antenna cable that goes here, and I have actually made a mistake by installing this screw a little early, but we'll remove that thread it through the grounding point on that antenna and secure it properly this time. Now we'll reconnect that by pushing it into place and then that's the logic board reinstalled. Let's go back down the bottom now and we'll make sure that the barometer sensor lines up properly as well as our microphone. We might need a little bit of pushing and a pers persuasion with the tweezers. That should sit looking something like that. We can go ahead with the Taptic engine that needs to be reinstalled. Re-secure it with the spudger on the FPC connector. It's all good to line up. And then there was the two crosshead screws that hold that down on the left. And one screw in the very bottom left. We'll go ahead and clip that into place. Now we've got this on the right hand side of the lightning connector. Now we've got this little plastic shield that needs to go over the top here. And that was secured down with a crosshead screw. Sorry, I keep saying crosshead screw. That's held down by a standoff screw just here and another one just here. So now we've got the standoff screw, standoff screw, standoff screw. I think that it was a crosshead screw there, but don't hold me to that just yet. Now we'll go ahead with the loudspeaker and drop that into place. We've got a standoff screw that holds down on the right hand side 
a long cross head screw on this bottom right. This really big, thick standoff screw right in the middle here. And then we can fold over the, actually oh let's pull that bit of tape out of the way. Fold over that bit. Resecure that bit of tape on the back of it. Use tweezers to install that little annoying shield. It's got a little hook on the back of that one, remember? If you remember what I said at the start, all the screws that are going into the standoff screws are tri-wing ones, so that's a tri-wing one there. Don't let me forget this standoff screw here. And now we can install that metal shield, what goes over the top of everything, and was, of course, held down by 10 points, if you know, tri-wing screws. We'll start off on the left. We'll get the one on the far right up here. And then if they're in and lined up, then everything else should follow suit and be lined up nicely. If it's not, you've probably done something wrong and retrace your steps. Same as if you've got a load of screws left over, you might have to just take a look and figure out where they're missing. But for us, I'm pretty confident that there's nothing left over on my magnetic mat. All the screws are held down. Everything looks nice. We've just got one crosshead screw to go in there. I'm using the tri-wing screwdriver for the crosshead screw there. Don't be like me and forget the SIM card because I always do that. Don't tell anyone. Make sure that all that adhesive is removed. I know I did most of it at the beginning, but there was a little bit left over there. And then we can go ahead and install the new adhesive seal. It's also a good idea to make sure that there's no adhesive left over on the back of the screen. You'll sometimes find that bits have peeled off and left behind. But with that all prepped up, we can go ahead and install the connector for the LCD, followed by the touch, pop the mug behind the screen again, and then go ahead and install the cable for the front sensor in the ear speaker. Make sure that it tucks down in the battery gap there. Reconnect the battery and then just make sure that the phone's charging. This is probably the most important part of the repair, but make sure that it's charging good and it's taking a good amount of charge if you've got an ammeter to test before sealing it up because there's nothing worse than finding out that it's not working after you've done all that work. But in this case, you can see that this one's working. We'll reinstall this small shield just here. And that was of course held down by three small tri-wing screws. Don't make the mistake of installing a big screw into there. Now we'll move up there, make sure that that battery's held down and install this top shield and the remaining tri-wing screws that need to be installed in there. Remember that this one is the long one just in the middle. And then I'll just search my pile of screws to find one that will fit. Because if you remember, we had one missing. The last place I looked, we've got a replacement screw. There we go. So finally, that screw's in place. And we just peel off the last bit of film on the adhesive seal. Pop the screen in at the top, first of all. Make sure that it sits flat and flush. Then secure it down on the edge. Fish bash bosh, the two pentalobe screws in the bottom of the phone. And then of course, plug it into the lightning cable. Make sure that it's charging and make sure that it stays on for more than three minutes. It's also important to make a phone call because the microphone's attached to that connector down there. But that just about completes this repair. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.